Morton has produced incontrovertible proof that Miss Cox and Mr. Merchant are enjoying a full sexual relationship and that their affair resumed only weeks after his original denial. How was she so sure of her story? Thursday's Independent exposed the sting. It was arranged through Anthony Gilberthorpe. Mr. Merchant's former researcher and by now, presumably, former friend. And filmed at his York home, the apparatus being set up by a surveillance expert. A figure of around £25,000 was negotiated. There was an unusual unanimity about the whole affair or non-affair across all newspapers. As the Daily Mail's Peter Mackay pointed out, only one journalist questioned the consensus. Writer Polly Toynbee suggested on Breakfast with Frost yesterday that their privacy had been invaded. Mr Merchant's resignation ensured that Polly's would be a lone voice. Merchant of Sleaze quits. Merchant resigns to protect family. And of course... End of the Peers show. The sun was jubilant and political editor Trevor Kavanagh explained just why the show had to close. Because he is a liar, sexual indiscretions may be a private matter. Lying is intolerable. But think for a moment. Mr. Merchant's lies stem from the original invasion of his privacy. If he hadn't been exposed in the sun in the first place, he wouldn't have needed to lie. No intrusion, no lies, no story, and no resignation. Speaking of sleaze, another pre-election story returned this week to halt the Tories. Scapegoat Hamilton gears up to name names. Desperate Hamilton turns on fired. Yes, the former MP for Tatton was back, protesting his innocence to anyone who'd listen. But with his friend Piers grabbing the headlines, that came down to the Commons Standards and Privileges Committee and, of course, The Guardian. Hamilton stood apart. He compared himself to the Bridgewater Four, unjustly imprisoned for 19 years. He compared himself to the Guildford Four and to the Birmingham Six. He just stopped short of declaring himself the Ritz Minibar One. Well, The Guardian was hardly likely to be sympathetic to its old adversary. Its original investigation into Mr Hamilton was one of the stories of the decade. If they got that wrong, it could have cost them millions. But in that well-worn phrase, they thought the story was in the public interest. I was going to end by pointing out that sexual sleaze always gets more space in papers than the much more serious matter of financial sleaze. But then I realised I devoted much more of this programme to sexual sleaze too. Odd that, isn't it? Good night. <laughs> I just wanted to um, make it clear that uh, the three people on this television show, uh, Paul Merton, Angus Deaton and myself, are not uh, great enemies. Um, Angus Deaton and I, for example, share you know, a real passion for football, because of course he's a great fan of, of um, the Chelsea, and I'm a, I'm a big fan of the, um, of the other team, so I'm just going to ring him. Um, obviously I know he's phone number off by heart. Um, I think it's over here. Somewhere. Tony's on the verge of serious money in Japan. I've got a meeting with the head of Sony Music tonight. I need clothes and I've got no clothes to wear. He manages LTJ Bookham, DJ King of drum and bass, and this could be the big time, if they can only get through the big tour. Difficult talent in modern times, Wednesday at 9 on BBC Two. But have you got an eye-owning service? From Shakespeare to sitcom, the many faces of Maureen Lipman in 50 minutes, followed by a classic episode of Agony at 9.35. <laughs> Stepping onto the front line, decisive moments now on BBC Two follows the camera at war 